we're going to look at creating a table of contents based on this sample memo that I have created. Now you will note that in this document there are already some headings identified and some sample text and some headings that we will uh, mark. Uh, so for example we've got point one this is going to be heading two because this is heading one so we're going to have a heading underneath it so we can click on this and it automatically changes the format for this particular point. Uh, this next item is a heading one Again, if we go to show and hide markings, we can see some of the information that appears. So this particular item, we're going to make a heading 2. And you see it automatically handles the format. Now this item we'll make as a heading 2 as well. And we'll go to our next heading 1, Core Lacks Subject Matter Jurisdiction. Now underneath this, we're going to make this heading 3, so it's going to take on a little bit of different formatting. and it juts out underneath and has a different number. We'll make this heading 2. Actually we'll make it 3. And I'm going to go on and jump through and you'll see where we are. Right, now we finished tagging, I'll call it, or identifying the various headings. And now that we've done that, Microsoft Word is smart enough to know that the various headings can be used to create a table of contents. So what we're going to do here, I can see there's a dot here that identifies this as heading. I'm going to insert the table of contents right here. This eraser button will clear the formatting. I can tell there's formatting right here by this dot, and if I look at the current style, it's set as heading. So I'm going to click on the eraser, which gets rid of the formatting. We're now going to insert a table of contents in front of our main document. So if we go to Insert, and we go down to Index and Tables, we now have a choice. We can click on the tab table of contents and there are some different looks that the table of contents will look like. So depending on which one we select, our table of contents will look like that and we can modify it in a moment. But let's select the formal one. We'll click OK. And what that does is it inserts where our cursor was, the table of contents, and it pulls that information directly from the various headings. Now if we click on a particular heading or table of contents, it actually creates a hyperlink that takes us to a different place in the document. Let's say we don't like the way that some of these um, table of contents look. If we right click, we can modify the particular font, or because it's a particular kind of heading, if we go into it, we can see that this is actually a table of contents one top heading. This is a table of contents two and so on. So let's modify as an example the table of contents one, which will affect these dark black ones right here. If we click on this and say modify style, we then have a choice to change the font. So let's make it something like uh, Times New Roman. And let's increase the font size to maybe 13 point font. And we click OK. And what we're doing is we're actually modifying table of contents style so that it will reflect it throughout the document. So as soon as we do that, it increases the font size of all table of content ones. We can do the same thing for table of content two. Actually, you saw what happened when I clicked on table of content two. It actually modified this particular one. So we're going to click outside of this, click on table of content two. We're going to go to modify style, and we're going to We'll keep it at Cambria, but we'll change it to 12 point font. Click OK. And you can see it modifies the size. We'll also go to Table Content 3. Let's say we don't like the font size. We can again make it 12 point. But instead of being italicized, for example, we can make it bold. And click OK. And it automatically changes the style of those particular table of contents. And that's a quick look at creating table of contents and modifying the styles of them.